Now in this video we'll be testing out new virtual fence collars on Adam's herd of 4 cows. I'll be going over how much they cost and how it all works, from putting the collars on to setting up the virtual fence on your phone or computer. And we found out it's pretty funny when the cows realize they can't get these collars off. So now it's middle of May, these cows have been on Adam's pasture here, the five acres, for about the past three weeks. And they all had their babies about middle of April, so a week or so before they were put on pasture. They had all their calves here and everybody's doing good. And so this video we're going to try something different. We have an e-collar, it's called e-shepherd, and you'll see it here. It goes around their neck, solar panel, and it's pretty much virtual fencing for cattle. So instead of moving fence, and he's been doing some rotational grazing here. He has five acres of pasture, so he's trying to utilize as much as he can for them. And so these collars are just going to make virtual fence instead of actually having to come move it out. You can just do it on your phone or tablet. It's kind of like a shot collar for dogs, but for cattle. All right, this is what the collars look like. So they're about five to six pounds. And then right here's a solar panel. I think we paid 350 bucks a collar, bought seven of them. And then I think it's $2 a month subscription for GPS and a few other accessories. So, so we'll put on four today. And then in June, Adam will have two heifers that are coming back to the herd that he retained from last year and then there'll be one bowl. The idea is Adam's gonna, we're gonna put these on today and then we'll teach them over this summer and then our cornfield, which is just like a mile away, they will be grazing the corn stalks come this fall. And I probably don't have the best, best fence around the field, so having these will be like extra security to make sure they don't go running onto the neighbors or whatever. So the idea behind this is utilize as much forage as you can because Adam like rotational grazes his paddock so can you just pull the fence do everything from your computer this tells the cows where to eat and then you can like optimize your forage it's a proof of concept can you graze corn stalks without a fence around the field never have to use wire and just throw them out there so so they'll have an audio to tell the cows that they're going somewhere they shouldn't and then there will be a pulse to remind them they shouldn't be there and we got these fully charged and then they'll just kind of stay up and charged by the solar panels. Adam's got the cows out of the pasture and we'll bring them in to throw them on. Come on, guys. So I'm just adjusting the uh, chute to set it up for cows. We had it set up to uh, run calves and you can just adjust the width. The newer chutes, you don't know how to do this, but I don't know. <laughs> Good <Here> enough. You, <laughs> you don't want to do this, do you? And this shoot sucks so bad. I need her yeah. to stand forward. No, yeah. just give her some time. Okay. Or I try and uh, loosen. In the YouTube videos, you know, like you want to be able to get a, a fist under it. So gotcha. I'm just going to tighten this up one on this side and then tighten it up one on that side. Yeah, one Spencer. Or, you know, there you go. That's good. And then you got to put these locking clips in here. That's why we use a chute, sweetie. <laughs> And if she loses it, she loses it. She really doesn't have a neck. No. She's short and squatty. Yeah. Kind of like me. Yeah. Uh oh. Yep. You don't like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Holy cow. Ruby. Ruby. Oh, she's going to get sweated. Okay, this thing isn't going anywhere. She'll learn to like it. Looks like good sack. Yeah, it does you look know. good. If it was too loose, that probably would have spun around. Correct. Well, it would have fell off. Yeah. All right, that's the first collar we put on. Not bad getting it on. We just had to make sure it was tight enough. And then probably a 20 second freak out of the cow realizing what's all around the neck. And then she's calm right now, hanging out. A little bit of a learning experience. How tight to, uh, how to put the collars on, not bad. Having a neck extender on a shoe would make it a lot easier. She was pulling back so bad on the, the head gate that we had actually put her back in the chute, squeeze her, and then just put it around her in the chute. So not not bad. Uh, we're, we got some learning to do. We could be a lot faster. Uh, we'll see if the next three go 
we get better at it. Ready? You got that? See, this is a giant cow. We yeah, have some, way. I have, have some extender chains. Okay. One, two, four. Sean? Three, four, yeah, five. Yeah, maybe five if you count. We sent the last two cows through the chute. One thing I didn't think about is how different each neck is on each cow. So you kind of had to figure out how tight or how loose to have it. And it really wouldn't have been that bad if our chute was a little better. Right where the gate is, is where you probably want to put the collar. And so we were always just fighting that. So we got the last two through the chute and all four now have the collars on. It took about 30 seconds for them to, to understand that there's a collar around their neck and now they're calm and like they were before. So they were just trying to shake it off and then they realize what's going on. So this is the old system Adam currently uses right now. It's a hot live wire, electricity is running through it and I'll give him a shock and he needs to come out here and move it fairly frequently to get them on new grass. So this right here is gonna be their training grounds from the red barn, like Adam said, this we do have a perimeter fence here, so they aren't going anywhere, but we're gonna section this off instead of using the poly wire and the little step posts that Adam's taken down we are gonna use their collars. And so their collars are gonna tell them to eat this grass, let's say, to right here. And we'll mark off an eighth of an acre or something. And then at noon, let's say, after lunchtime, they move to this grass to that grass. Is just the idea, and you don't have to be out there to tell them to do it. So, and so there's gonna be a big learning curve, and I'm sure we will uh, figure it out here and see how it works. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Here, I'll do it again. I need to get stronger. Spencer, don't do it. Oh, that, yeah, that's not. No. Square off that yeah. that post to there. Just let them have that yeah. little tiny section for a couple days. Yeah. And then we'll just keep moving the line through here and kind of train them. First, we'll see if they respect it first. Yeah, there's a good chance they'll run right through run it. Run right through and it. And so yeah. that's why you want to do it in a controlled pen with good boundaries. So this is a very small, good training uh, paddock. So we'll see. Nice. Now we just got done on the computer. We set up the virtual fence and we're going to get them into position, turn it on from our phones. And this is the first time ever trying it. So this is what it looks like on the phone. We made it as simple as possible. First, what you're looking at is the orange. That is a virtual fence we set up using GPS. The four blue dots are the cows with their collars on. Right now, the three are actually in the barn there. All we're going to be testing out is the south virtual line. There's actual physical fence around all this besides the south line. So this is the perfect area to test these collars out for the first time. Turned around. That, it worked that time. That is cool. Shock. Got her. Yeah, the left one's gonna get shocked. Shock. Yep. Oh, she's supposed to turn around. She's stubborn and gonna walk right through it. Doesn't really know where to go. And I think they can walk through it, so it doesn't shock them once they power through it. Yeah, there's a there's a six foot gate, so once they're through it, it shuts off. And then, uh, see, she's turning around and learning that. So it's, it's going to take them a little while to get, uh, when they hear that beep, they'll eventually learn that they're going to get that pulse and turn around. But they just don't know yet. This is their virtual paddock, right? That corner to that corner, and then they get the yard too. There's a water feeder back there. And so they might stampede me real quick here. And there it's ringing. I'm just gonna get out of here and they can learn on their own. And once they associate the, the noise and the beeping with the pulse, uh, they'll start getting hang of it. They just don't know, they're hearing it and then they got the pulse, they just really don't know what to do, so. And they don't know that they're in the wrong spot. Yeah. They're, really, they're really worked up right now. We just ran them through the chute. We put the collars on, a lot of new stuff to them. 
they're kind of excited uh, and so they're running through it and so they're they're getting the beep and they're getting the, the pulse and they're just blowing right through it I think once we slow things down and they go up to it naturally walking uh, they'll hear the beep get the pulse and then they'll th th turn around and then they'll start associating that beep with the pulse and that's how they start getting trained but they say it takes 10 to 14 days to get them uh, fully trained so this is a work in progress for both uh, us learning how to manage it how to turn on the the virtual paddocks the virtual fencing and then obviously the cows need to learn that uh, what those collars and the beeps and the pulses mean so yeah, it's a work in progress we'll show you guys uh, along the way and how this is gonna work it's it's kind of an experiment it's, it's just fun again this is very small scale controlled environment so we're gonna we're gonna test it out this summer and see if we can increase utilization of forage and increase stocking density and get a couple more cows out on this um, longer term so that's yes. the goal that's the idea so now here's what it looks like from an aerial view three days after putting the collars on them and you can start to see where our virtual fence is physically on the line of grass adam said the next morning when he came out to check on the cows they were inside where the virtual fence was and they never crossed it again. So in hindsight, we probably should have put the collars on them, not activated it, let their heart rates calm down, let them relax, and then the next day turn on the virtual fence and they probably would have learned it even that much faster. We officially moved the virtual fence. So that line is now roughly 30 feet further to the south and that cow is starting to figure it out. So we're sitting here watching, just got updated five minutes ago. Been really impressed with the, the collars and how fast the cows have adjusted and got trained to them. So, and it took them oh, less than a day to really get to find the line. And the software actually has a ability to track how many audio tones versus pulses they get. And they'll put that in a ratio. And when they, at 80% of the time, when they just get the audio, listen to it, and then back away, they're considered, I guess, trained. And so out of the four cows, three days in, one of them's at 86%. And the, the other three are at uh, 75%. One thing we did notice is when they're in the in the, the barn here, the metal roof throws off the GPS coordinates. So uh, they were getting some pulses in the barn. And uh, so we had to take into account for the metal roof. So if, if you extract that, I'd say all of them are above 80%. Pretty easy. Uh, took just a couple days in a controlled setting here. First time we've moved the virtual fence. And uh, as Spencer just pointed out, this one within five minutes is already pushing the boundary. So taking this uh, this paddock here down, probably 80% of the vegetation. Now we're gonna move them on to the other thing. So when we just put the collars on, they kind of freaked out for 30 seconds getting used to it. And so far, Adam's been watching them closer than he's ever watched them before. And are they getting used to the collars? They try to itch them off maybe that first day, uh, day three. They don't even seem to really bother them, right? So. They're doing cow things, they're chewing their cud, they're sleeping, they're laying down, very relaxed. I had my doubts when we put them on, they, they seemed a little big, but uh, here day three, as they're getting used to them, I don't really see any adverse effects to them. They're, they're just kind of getting used to them. And now it's about two hours later, they've all went past the line now, eaten and discovered that the fence has moved so they don't get, uh, no alarm goes off and they don't get shocked. Pretty cool, this is the first time moving the fence after we set it up and also with the collars you can fence off things you don't want so like you can make your virtual fence around the square like we did and then you could make a, a small little like uh they'll get beeped when they come in here but for now we're just using poly wire to keep them out of spots that uh we're trying to get some regrowth here so now it's june 1st a couple weeks after we put the collars on the cows this is the virtual fence right now the fence is here they get this grass and they don't get this grass and then the fence goes all the way down to the fence line right there and then adam threw out a poly wire just because we're still they're still training they're still getting used to it it's nice to have a physical wire there too the grass got ahead of them and they are picking through the new growth right now so in an ideal situation we would make this virtual fence even smaller and the four pairs would be in a tighter area we're still training them and this is the first time they're out on big pasture here getting used to the collars 
And let me know if you guys have any questions on these colors or what you want to learn more about them as next video we'll bring it up to date and try and answer all these questions. This video was just our first impressions and we're just learning as we go. Like Adam mentioned, one of the mistakes we made, we didn't factor in the metal building throwing off the GPS. This will be pretty exciting to see them out on corn stalks this fall after harvest and how that all goes with them being on a field without a fence. We'll be sure to give you our honest opinion as we paid for these colors ourselves and this video is not sponsored by anybody.